What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. We are back today with another XJ220 video for you guys. Hopefully today we are gonna get this car running for the very first time for you guys. So if you watched our last video on this car, we talked about the exhaust system that we built for this car, as well as the intake modifications that we made to the car. With those upgrades done, the last major item that we had on this car before we could get it running was the wiring system. So naturally with the major modifications that we had made, including the turbos and the exhaust system, there was not an easy way to be able to retune the car on the stock ECU. So of course we were gonna be using a new ECU. For those of you that have watched a lot of our channel know that the DTA fast computers are our go-to. It's what we used in the DeLorean builds as well as the old twin turbo 348 challenge and a number of our other projects. So for this car, we are going to be using this ECU. This is a DTA fast S80 Pro which we have a lot of experience with in the past. We are really excited to get this into this car. We know it'll run really great on this system. So with that, I'm gonna let Steve explain the wiring system that he built for this car, and then hopefully we'll get this thing running. So let's get right to it. This engine harness here is not the actual engine harness for this engine. It's extraordinarily similar. This is the main bulkhead that would go to the firewall. The Jaguar actually has two bulkhead connectors like this. So this one here is a 61 pin connector and the one that's in the Jaguar, it has a single 55 pin connector and then another 19 pin connector. You can see that this harness here, like the Jaguar, all the actual plugins are the necessary uh, plugs for what it's plugging onto. And I like my harnesses to be quite flexible. And so what I actually use is called turbo tubing. Uh, you know, it's an insulation for wiring specifically. And we frequently will also use it on hoses and things that are close to the exhaust to stop um, it actually can take a lot of heat. One of the things I really like about it is that it's actually flexible. And so if you need to work on some of the wiring, you can take the boots off and actually pull it back a fair bit so that you can actually work on the wiring. And then because it's flexible, you can see you can put the boot back on and it just goes right back to normal. So you can see here, these are our two engine connectors. Um, if we're pulling the engine out, the only thing that we need to do electronically is disconnect these two and then cut this zip tie here and this zip tie here and then over here, this cable needs to be disconnected. Other than that, everything electrically will just come out with the engine. After the engine harness was created, I began really looking at this car and um, deciding exactly how I wanted to tackle uh, making the harness for this car. My idea was basically to copy and basically mimic the existing harness that was in the car. The actual layout of the harness was pretty good. The way it is, is uh, it has two main big round connectors, as I showed you before, that everything for the entire engine come through those two big plugs. And the only other plug that exists aside from those two big plugs is the main power wire going to the battery to the starter motor. Um, so in that case, everything for the ECU is run through these two looms that you can see right here. Now these two looms, they go over there to the passenger side of the car. Um, and then the stuff for the actual gauges, all of the gauges actually are in this Deutsch connector here. The original harness, I don't know whose idea this was. I wasn't there when they built this car, but they decided it was a really good idea to put the flange for the connector on the outside, on the inside the engine compartment. And then um, the actual plate that the bulkhead connector attaches to is completely epoxied on. And the problem with that is, is that the flange is on the outside then the wiring is on the inside and it went over there and terminated into 
the actual engine ECU. And at this point, there's three separate plugs on that harness that were too large to go through the hole that direction. And obviously with the flange on it, it wasn't going through the hole this direction. The only way to take the original harness out was to completely depin it up inside this hole. Once that was done, um, I basically just took the measurement and I was able to make this cable that you see here completely in my office in there on the bench. Yeah, I'm laying on the ground and I don't know why. Uh, <laughs> anyway, so. Okay, so I gotta lay back down. Yes, because as of right now, I can not even see your head if I'm gonna also see you. Right, so. Okay, you ready? Oh, you did a better version that time. We should just redo it. It's FedEx. I think we're getting something. This, this is actually the original factory location of the ECU that came with the car. Um, this ECU is quite a bit smaller than the factory Zytec ECU. Uh, all the same, I made this plate to mount it in the same place that the original one was mounted. Um, these relays here, basically uh, uh, these two are for the fuel pump, um, this one provides the power for the actual ignition and injectors at the back of the car. Um, and then the lowest one down here at the bottom is actually the main power that runs the ECU and a lot of the other um, low current functions. So. so now that Steve has explained the wiring system that he built for this car in conjunction with our DTA S80 Pro ECU, uh, we now got the car on the lift and we're gonna go ahead and get it prepped to hopefully run for the first time for you guys. Does XP, baby. It should. You're really with the times, are you, with the Windows XP? XP is a shit. I like XP. The best thing about XP is that absolutely none of the programs expect you to be connected to the internet. They all assume that you're oh. not. You got a problem? System, yeah, well, well, never mind, we're good. I, I gotta set the date. Ryan let the battery go dead. Oh, we gotta set the day. It is See? September 11th, 2001. <laughs> <laughs> There's our current fuel temperature, and there's our current amount of ethanol. We currently have 68% ethanol. That thing sounds so mean. The right. choppiness is way more than I expected. You know, I knew about the...
at this point, it definitely seems to run pretty good. Um, it has not yet been tuned at all. So basically, you saw when I first tried to get it to start and it didn't seem to want to start, I literally just changed the entire fuel map by about 20% and then it seemed to start. Um, it seems like the actual map at this point is probably still a fair bit rich. So I could see there that the actual lambda compensation, once the uh, wide bands were warmed up, the um, compensation seems to be about 20 or 30% negative. So um, at this point, I think we're, our next step is to go ahead and kind of finish putting the car the rest of the way back together. And then we need to take this car to the dyno and actually get it tuned. Hell yeah, this thing sounds so much more mean than I would have expected. You know, I knew about the uneven fire, but that choppiness is just so much more ridiculous than I'd expected. It sounds almost a bit, you know, like an old American muscle car to a degree. It's really cool. Now, of course, the exhaust right now is just straight through, so that is the full straight pipe effect. This thing sounds super badass. I am super excited about what it sounds like. Really excited to have this thing put together drive it a bit, take it to the dyno, you know, all that stuff, get this thing tuned properly. Thank you guys so much for watching. What do you guys think of this car? Super excited for the future with this car. I think we got some really awesome things planned for it, and we'll see you guys then. You ready? I, I guess, I guess I'm ready. You want me to just stand here and then just... So if you guys can't tell because you're watching this on the internet, but this car smells like E85. It does, yeah. The 68% ethanol was more than we, I think, originally anticipated.